Christ who looks forward with the eyes of hope. He saw a calm sea, a calm waves and calm winds. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, he saw himself giving himself as a sacrifice of all of mankind. In John chapter 12, verses 24, he cares for even the seed, a single seed that falls on the floor. Through the cross, many people will come before God. And Jesus is seeing this right now with the eyes of hope. And so he was joyous and happy. He did not complain because he had the eyes of hope. No matter how many people attacked him and beat him and whipped him and tortured him, Jesus cried out, Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. He saw his sacrifice in the eyes with the eyes of hope. He saw the countless number of people being saved. And that is why such prayers were able to come forth from his lips. Jesus wanted to show an absolute protection to the disciples. That is why he was sleeping. That, that's why he was slumbering. But these disciples who were faithless were saying to themselves, oh my goodness, we're in trouble. The water was filled in the boat. So Jesus, Jesus is covered with water, right? That's common sense. Jesus Christ, who is God himself, who created all of the universe. Today, we must understand, no matter what type of situation we are in, no matter what type of difficulties come our way, even if we are right before death, if we remember Emmanuel, that God is with us. Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Just as Abraham received a daily blessing, I pray that you too will receive the same blessing. Please follow along. Hope is looking over. Just as you look over a shoulder or look over a fence, hope is looking over the difficulties. Hope is looking over. What can you see? During the spring, you see the saplings coming through the frost and blooming. If When there's a big storm, when there's a big wind and a big cloud, when it dissipates, you see the sun rays and the sunlight coming through that great storm. Now, we men don't know, but women who are pregnant, you know, they, their stomach, it hurts, right? And they create a new life through that pain. Oh man, this child looks like me. This child looks like you. Through pain and suffering, a new life is born. Now, if you have a daughter, you know, don't be sad. And if you have a son, don't be, you know, happy. Whether you have a daughter or a son, be thankful. When you look at the Bible, you know, if there's no women, then how can a history continue? So give thanks whenever you have a daughter. You know, when you're having a meeting with your friends and you're drinking together. Oh, did you did you have your child? Oh, I had a child. What child, you know, what did you have? 
oh, you must have had a daughter because you're not saying anything. You know, that's a hopeless husband. You know, oh, you had a daughter. Good job. You know, you say some uplifting words to your wife. You know, you have a daughter. The firstborn is a daughter. Secondborn is a daughter. Thirdborn is a daughter. You know, can, can men have children? Or can men have daughters? No. Now, sons, if, you know, they're in high school and you want to take your son somewhere, you know, they say, Dad, I don't want to go. Or, Dad, why do I have to go? But daughters, they follow you everywhere. Sons. You know, they, they gain debt and they, they fail and they come at home and they just say, Oh, Father, hello. And they just go into their room. But daughters, they come out and they, you know, they 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 prepare your meal they prepare your clothes and they they're good to their parents those who have sons they can't even go travel to the united states but the parents who have daughters can travel wherever they want you know, it's a story that I heard. You know, I don't know this. It's a story that I heard. Hope is looking over. Is looking over. We must have the faith of hope. Seeing the solution within the problem. We must not complain. When we do so, there will be no complaints. Please believe this. Seeing the glory of God within death. Look at Jesus. When you die, that's, that's it, right? Oh man, we live once and we die once. Oh man, this person died. Oh man, you, you know... Uh, how can you die? You, you have, you're leaving behind three children. How can I take care of these children by myself? This, this is what the world is. Seeing the glory of God within death. Be like Jesus. Have the heart of Jesus. When you look at Jairus' daughter, Mark chapter 5, verses 22 through 23 records this. Jesus saved her. You know, oh, Jesus, my daughter is dead. And when Jesus says, oh, I could save her, everyone laughed at him. But look at, look at the daughter of Jairus. He, she lived. She, he is life it's, him, itself. He is the owner of life. He scolds death. And he, he makes it look like, so easy, just as if you're waking up a sleeping person. Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 17. We see a widow in a town called Nain. She's a widow. All of the people in Nain, they cried and wept for her. But Jesus told her not to weep. Why? 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 Don't cry because Jesus is saying, hey, I'll be responsible over you. He commands death. Hey, get up! Get up! So that those tears turn to joy. You know, this widow only had one son. She can never have another son, right? Because she's a widow. And so Jesus went to this, this widow's house. He went to the town. It's a very small town.
and he took the widow's son. And there's only one road there. So he, you know, walked a little bit outside of the town. And, and Jesus must have spoken to the child. I'm, I'm imagining this. And number three, who was it? It was Jesus' friend. Jesus' friend, Lazarus. And all of the town folks knew that Jesus loved Lazarus. Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick. And he, he waited two more days. He didn't go there. He didn't go to Lazarus. In order to show the glory of God and to glorify God. Oh man, if, if Rabbi was here, then my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus spoke to her a great word, right? John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. What does Jesus say? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says that he's the resurrection and he is the life. So, not even a shadow of death can touch him. Whether even if you die, you will live. And those who live will be eternal. And he asks Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Bethany means the house of torture. It also has a different meaning, but it also means house of torture. So because of Lazarus, this house of torture, this house of suffering, it disappeared. It turned to the house of joy, house of happiness. The, loving, the love of God was upon this town. You know, whenever you're weeping and you're crying, oh, Lazarus is dead, teacher, Lazarus is dead. In John chapter 11, verse 39, Jesus says, hey, roll the stone away. Take the, take the stone away. Christianity is a religion that rolls the stone. We Christians do not have a grave. So don't write a grave on your on your grave. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse or 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 you know we you know people write you know whose house this person's house that person's house. And you you know, it's in, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. Amen, uh, Lord. You know, please come. You know, how great is this? But, but people, they don't believe. They, they weep and they cry. And they all cry. And they say, Jesus, it's already been days since he's dead, since he died, and he's already rotting, and you can smell him. God creates things that are non-existent, and he, he, he just creates it. He creates nothing, or he creates something out of nothing. So he calls Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And death couldn't do anything and had to give Lazarus up. Loving congregation members, the reason that Jesus came was to destroy death. First John chapter 3 verse 8 records this. And Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 25 verses 6 through 8, says that he came to eternally destroy death. That is Jesus Christ who we believe in. And that 
person, Jesus, is with us, whether we are in church, whether we are in our homes, whether we are in our businesses or jobs. So why are you afraid? Why are you concerned? Do not be afraid of death. As soon as you die, you will go to heaven. As soon as you leave this place, those who do not believe, as soon as they die, they go to hell. So you have to believe well on this land in order to, in order for the kingdom of heaven to do well. Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 through 20. You know, when two or three people pray on this earth, then I will be with them. Right? I will be with them there. So they, the body was smelling. You know, look look at Jesus who opens the gates of hope. He's smelling. He, he's, he's rotting. But the Bethany, the house of suffering, turned to the house of celebration. John chapter 11, verse 39. Hey, roll that stone away. Take it away. And so the town folks, they started to open their eyes and, and look in the grave. They can smell the rotting flesh. And they thought to themselves, man, this is it. My brother is dead. And so... In front of all these people, in front of the town folks and in front of the family members, Jesus cried us out, Lazarus, come out! With the faith of hope, death raised his hands in surrender and gave Lazarus up. And as soon as the command fell, Lazarus, come out! Lazarus was completely fixed. So there was a great, uh, great festivities, festivities that took place in the village. I am resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Never forget this and believe in it. I say to you, like Jesus, if you believe, please say amen. I am the resurrection and life. The one who believes in me will live. This is Jesus' word. John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. We must hold on to this scripture and live our lives. No matter what type of difficulties and pain come our way, we must never forget this. Even if we die, like I said before, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. There are 14 other places that's recorded. But he came to destroy death. That is Jesus. In conclusion, like I said before, hope is looking over. Hope is looking over. Right now, this is death. This, this, this shroud is death. But don't look at this death, but look over it. That is what hope is. Through the eyes of hope. When you see hope. Look at Jesus' disciples. Rabbi, Rabbi, that blind man... Is he blind because of his own sins or is he blind because of his parents' sins? And what does Jesus say? You know, these disciples who love, you know, these laws and stuff. Oh, he must, he must be blind because he sinned. And so they asked Jesus. And Jesus says, it is not his sin and it is not the parents' sin. It is because God is trying to fulfill a mission through him. And that is why he is blind. Jesus is saying that he is blind because God wants to do something. Jesus Christ, who sees the work of God even through this blind man. 
when you look at yourself in the mirror, you might not be worth anything. You know, you might not do anything in the day. You just eat and go to the bathroom. But you have to look over this and look for the works of God. Then you get to, you, you start to be, you know, start to pray for other people. You start to pray for the people that are around you. Jesus saw a mission of God even within this blind man. When Jesus saw the blind man, he saw hope. With the rotten eyes of the disciples, when they saw the disciple or when they saw the blind man, they were arguing to themselves, is it his sin or is it parents' sin? But Jesus said, no, it's it's not his sin or the parents' sin. It's because God wants to do something. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is the hope of all mankind. How great is this scripture? Jesus is our hope. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. Jesus is God's secret, God's mystery. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. This secret, this mystery, is the hope of glory. Jesus is God's secret. And God's secret, when it's inside us, it will become the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Loving congregation members, the secret of God is Christ. And Christ is inside you right now. And therefore, that secret gives the hope of glory. I pray that you may receive it and may you return back home with strength and glory and victory. And I pray that you may live within God's glory. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 1 verse 23 testified, We all say we believe in Jesus and that we follow Jesus. But Father God, I pray that you may forgive us for not looking forward with the eyes of hope like Christ. I pray that with the message that we receive, that we will all become people of hope. May you bless us with the blessing of hope and faith becoming one. Father God, until we end, I pray that you may be glorified. And I pray that whatever we see, and whatever we do may be a glory upon you. And Father God, we thank you for all of these things. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you.